Over 7 million of you watched me survive 100 days on one block sky block. But this time, I will be trying to survive on one lucky block. However, there is a twist. I will be doing this entire challenge in virtual reality. Mining a lucky block has a chance to kill you or give you a piece of epic loot. Make sure to subscribe because I only have 100 days to explore all four lucky islands and make it to the end portal. Will I defeat the ender dragon or will I run out of time? It's the start of day one and I spawned on this random yellow block with a question mark on it. There was a sign that told me to break the block below you, but I don't really like listening to people so I destroyed the sign instead. But that didn't work so finally I broke the block below me. And then my ex-girlfriend showed up. All of my ex-girlfriends. But just like they left me in the past, they left me once again. I think I'm just meant to be alone forever. On my third lucky block, this TNT spawned in. Wait, what? No, no, no. Where am I supposed to go? Oh, come on. Oh my gosh, I hate this already. However, my luck did turn around and I got some grass blocks. Now I can expand my island and hopefully have a better chance surviving. Oh yeah, guys. Look at how much room we have now. I mined a few more lucky blocks and then these guys spawned in. I was definitely scared at first, but then I realized I could just punch them both into the void. Yeah, take that, losers. Stay the off my island. Then I use my cobblestone to expand my island even more. We are looking so much better already. Later in the day, I got some wooden planks, so I was able to make my first set of tools. <laughs> then this iron golem spawned in. And let's just say it was great having him on my island. <laughs> Oh my god, did you guys see that? This is awesome. Unfortunately, later that night, I got this cheetah, and he kind of pushed my golem off the map. No, you stupid cheetah. All right, that's it. Get over here. And if my luck couldn't get any worse, a lightning storm came. I was so scared, so I spent the rest of night one hiding behind my crafting bench. Ah, uh, finally, day two, and I can feel we're off to a great start. I really hate this game. I rebuilt my island and then I got these weird eggs, but I couldn't actually do anything with them. Do you guys have any idea what this is? I made a chest to put all my important stuff in just in case I die again. You can never be too safe. And then I had my first signs of human contact. This young gentleman spawned in and I believe I can get him to become my friend. Never mind, abort, abort. I repeat, he is not friendly. <sighs> Well, I guess that's what you get when you're always trying to be the nice guy. But it's okay, I got my revenge. I'm joking! Stop! 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 Later that day, I got a water bucket, so I used it to lower my island by one entire level. Now, I already know some of you are going to comment and say this was kind of unnecessary, but I think it looks nicer. Let me know what you guys think. It's now day three and I randomly got this enchanting table, but hey, I'll take it. And then this pillager tried to 360 no scope me. What the heck? So I did it right back. It looks like I've got the better skills, Mr. Pillager. I was peacefully mining lucky blocks and then a creeper spawned. You know, that's okay guys. I really don't mind rebuilding my island. Well, that's what I thought until this super creeper spawned. No, come on, please. I just rebuilt this. <sighs> okay, that's it. I officially hate lucky blocks. This is way harder than I thought it would be. It's day four, my island is a mess, and my morale is low. But that all changed because this giant chicken spawned in. Oh my god, do you guys see this thing? He's huge. This is crazy. I quickly and carefully built a pin so that I could keep the big guy safe. Let me know down in the comments what you guys would like me to name this giant chicken. Sadly, after that, everything went downhill once again. These endermites spawned in, and I swear they were so OP. They killed me not once, not twice, not three times, and not even four times, but five times. And it's situations like this that really want to make me just give up on this video. But you know what? For you guys, I'll pull through. And later that night, my ex-girlfriend showed up again. See you guys, I knew she still loved me. Maybe I won't be forever alone. I guess one of my other exes got jealous because then she showed up. And then my exes had a baby together. And this little guy marks the very first baby of my one lucky block challenge. Aww. I started day five by repairing my island. Aww. 
shortly after repairing my island this dog spawned in, but unfortunately I had no bones to tame him with. And then a diamond block spawned in and somehow managed to kill my dog. And the worst part is I can't even mine it because I have no iron. No, my poor dog. You were so young. I'm sorry. After that, I killed a zombie and he dropped some rotten flesh. This was my first source of food this entire challenge. Ew, I don't want to eat this, but I'm so hungry, you guys. I have no choice. <laughs> oh, I, th I think I'm going to be sick. Oh, the worst part is in VR, you can taste it. I ended up getting distracted because I randomly mined an Eye of Ender. I have to defeat the Ender Dragon within 100 days and I've already got my first Eye of Ender. Getting an Ender Eye this early is making me feel so much more confident about this challenge. Things got even better because later on I got a Lava Bucket. And with this I can already build a Cobblestone Generator. It's day 6 and my cobblestone generator is finally done. I mined it for a little bit, but honestly right now there's not really a reason to farm it, so I didn't mine for too long. So I went back to breaking lucky blocks. I was getting a bunch of resources, but then I got my first sheep. Now that I have a sheep, I can hopefully get a bed soon and then I don't have to worry about phantoms anymore. We need a name for this guy. I think I'll call you Bed Factory. Aw, oh, who's a good little Bed Factory? I went back to mining and then I got exploded by random falling TNT because why wouldn't that happen on a game mode called Lucky Block, right? Things are supposed to be lucky, but they're always unlucky. I don't get it. And later that day, my ex-girlfriend's mom spawned in. Look at that porker, she's already bossing my ex around. The game trolled me once again by turning my diamond block into a netherite block, which I still can't mine by the way. And shortly after that, my netherite block got turned into a redstone block. Well, unfortunately I lost my netherite block, but hey, at least I can mine this. And then the worst thing that happened, happened. A hoglin spawned in. There is nothing, and I mean nothing, that I hate more in Minecraft than these stupid hoglins. Yeah, take that, you stupid pig. I went back to mining lucky blocks to see what else I would get, and once again, my ex-girlfriend showed up. Maybe they do miss me. I got a music disc and spent the rest of night six listening to some tunes. It's now day 7 and I spent most of the day farming the lucky block and I'd hate to say it as much as I dislike this game mode, it is a lot of fun seeing what each lucky block gives me. For example, this crazy tower of spiraling ore. I love how every lucky block is a random chance of either killing you, giving you something good, or just something really weird like this happening. It really does keep me excited every time I mine a lucky block. Unfortunately though, I still don't have any iron so I can't mine the diamond, but they should be safe up there so I'm not too worried about it. Then this creeper showed up and sure enough, they were safe. Although would the creeper have mined it for me or would it have destroyed the diamond block? Can you guys let me know cause I'm actually not sure. Speaking of random events, I got another diamond block and then I got launched up a million feet into the air. Well, this is about the most horrifying thing that can happen in VR. This kind of feels like one of those Tower of Terror rides at a theme park when you just go straight up and straight back down. I'll be right back guys, I think I need to go change my underwear. And then something really strange happened. Well, I was not expecting that, but at least my diamond block is now way up there, so that should be safe now. A few lucky blocks later, and a blaze spawned in. This gave me immediate flashbacks of my last challenge of one block sky block. For those of you that saw my one block series, you might remember when that one blaze almost burnt down my entire island. And if you haven't seen that series, it's definitely not one you want to miss. Fortunately for me, my lucky block island is almost entirely cobblestone. I spent most of night 7 breaking lucky blocks, and then I got another sheep. I sheared them both, and now I was finally able to make my first bed. Oh man, this thing is comfy in VR. Guys, I'm gonna sleep great tonight. On day 8, I ended up with a second water bucket, so I decided to make an infinite water pool. After finishing my infinity pool, I decided what I could make, and I decided to go ahead and make my farm. I 
I put wheat on the right side and carrots on the left side, but unfortunately I ran out of dirt blocks. This isn't a big deal because they drop all the time from lucky blocks. On day 9 I ended up getting another one of these giant chickens, and then I found out the craziest thing. No way, you can ride these things? That's awesome! This thing is way better than a horse. Or maybe the chicken just got so big that it thinks it's a horse. But sadly, all the fun quickly came to an end because I accidentally rode the chicken right off the island. <gasps> no! Are you serious? Come on, Mr. Chicken, don't die on me! He was falling towards the void, so I jumped on his back and tried to do all I could to save him. Hang in there, Mr. Chicken. I promise I'm gonna get you out of here. I cleared a bunch of dirt blocks, hoping it would be a big enough hole for him to get out of. Unfortunately, it didn't work, but I did not give up. Finally, after doing all I could, he finally rose to the surface, but unfortunately I fell in the excitement. <sighs> well, I may have died, but at least I saved Mr. Chicken. I spent the rest of night 9 repairing my farm and putting away the second giant chicken. Wow, talk about a crazy night. You guys are definitely going to have to help me come up with a good name for this guy. It's now the morning of day 10 and I woke up to four random islands that had all spawned around my island. Are you guys seeing this? This is so cool. Look how big these are. It looks like there's a total of four of them, but who knows, maybe there's even more further out. I don't know what the purpose of these are, but I'm really curious to find out. Luckily I had already made my cobblestone generator, so I spent the next couple days grinding out some cobblestone. It's now day 13 and I was able to make so many stacks of cobblestone slabs. This should hopefully be enough to get me across to the first island. And for those of you that have never played Minecraft in VR, I hope you all can appreciate how terrifying it is bridging across big open voids like this. It really looks and feels as if I were to fall off this in the game, I would actually fall in real life. So if you're scared of heights, maybe don't ever try this out. I finally made it across to the island and it looks like this island has nothing but villagers. They were even kind enough to show up to greet me. Hello chieftain, thank you for welcoming to your village. I did some exploring and found something very sinister. <coughs> Buddy are you okay? I'm sorry I don't know why they're doing this to you man, I'll try to save you, take my hand. For some reason they have villagers trapped in flaming cages, I don't know what's wrong with these guys. I did some more exploring and then I found a chest. And of course, it was garbage. And then I found another one. And then I found four iron blocks. This is actually huge because I'll finally be able to make some iron tools. I ended up finding one chest full of emeralds and then I found my first diamond. People of this floating island village, you must obey me, I am now your master. Before I knew it, it was nighttime and we were being overran by zombies so I decided to make a bed and go to sleep. I spent day 14 gathering the rest of the resources I could, and after a full day of exploring the island, it was finally time for me to leave. Goodbye fellow villagers, thank you for letting me steal, I, I mean, thank you for giving me all of your goods, I really appreciate it. As a token of gratitude to show my appreciation for all the goods they gave me, I decided to light up the pathway so that no zombies would spawn and kill them. On the morning of day 15, it was great to finally be back and mining Lucky Blocks. This really cool looking pigeon spawned in, but I was having a lot of trouble taming it. He was flying all over my island. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be able to tame this bird. I went back to my addiction of breaking open Lucky Blocks, and then this really weird thing spawned in. <laughs> what is that noise? <laughs> Did that noise sound pretty accurate, guys? Let me know. Whatever he was shooting me with was making me float up into the air, and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna die once I fall. I just kept going higher and higher and higher, and before I knew it, I was like a hundred feet above my island. Wow, I am really high up. I think my only chance of surviving this is falling into my infinity pool. Come on. <sighs> Have I ever told you guys I hate this game? I finally killed it, but once again, I'm floating above my island. Alright, this time I'm not gonna miss. <sighs> Alright, this is it! <laughs> Using the iron I got from the villager island, I made an iron pickaxe and now I was finally able to mine the diamonds that were above my island. 
and now I'm able to make my very first diamond sword. I feel so OP holding this thing, I don't think I'll ever die again. I spent the majority of my night breaking lucky blocks. Everything was going well, but then these crazy mobs spawned in. What the heck are these? Alright, well, I guess a diamond sword isn't as OP as I thought. I was able to outsmart them though and push them into the void. Yeah, take that, you stupid skeleton horse thing. After killing them, I was able to take one of their horses for my own. Look at how cool this thing is. On day 16, I got some bone meal and decided to work on my farm. This will give me enough food for myself and wheat to breed my animals with. And soon I'll most likely have to expand my animal pen because it's already way too crowded. I broke open some more lucky blocks and then I got a turtle. Hey, Mr. Turtle, what's up? Welcome to my island. Let's go ahead and put you in here. I know it's not much, but I'll make you an aquarium later. And shortly after getting the turtle, another pigeon spawned in. And this time I was able to tame him. I spent the rest of day 16 watching my crops grow. On day 17, I got some cookies, and this was my first actual source of food. Mmm, oh yeah, that tastes so much better than rotten flesh. Mmm, no one tell Cookie God about this, he already hates me. I got back to mining, and unfortunately I got launched into the air. Oh, come on, not this again. You know, at least I have a really cool view from up here. I definitely cannot complain about that. Later that day, I got this really cool looking zombie horse. I realized this is probably a good time to extend my animal pen because there's no way he's gonna fit in there. I spent the rest of day 17 upgrading my animal pen. It felt great having all this extra room, and then I realized I still don't have a base for myself. I've got six storage chests and they're almost all full and it's just a complete unorganized mess. I don't really have a lot of blocks to use other than cobblestone, so I figured I would spend the next few days farming cobblestone and make a castle base. I also broke open some lucky blocks so that I could get more wood for detailing around the castle. By day 22, I was done grinding resources and I spent the next four days making my castle. On the night of day 26, I finally finished the build, and for only being cobblestone and wood, I was really happy with how it turned out. It does look a little plain, but I did the best with what I had. I'm curious what you guys think. Rate my castle on a scale of 1 to 10 and let me know in the comments below how good you think it is. On day 27, I spent the entire day bringing my loot into the castle and organizing it. On day 28, I tended to my farm, and I bred all my animals. On the next day, I broke open a bunch of lucky blocks, and then I got my first chicken. Well, my first actual chicken. And after that, my prettiest ex-girlfriend spawned in. She always did have the prettiest smile. I went to push her into my infinity pool, but I guess she really didn't want to be here because she already left me. Goodbye, Beatrice. You'll always be number one in my heart. I broke open another lucky block, and then I got super speed. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. I'm so fast. And I could barely control myself. I mean, look how fast this is. And I guess I really couldn't control it because this happened. Well, that was stupid. R.I.P. my diamond sword. It's okay though, because right after that, the coolest thing spawned in. Whoa, what the heck? Oh my gosh, it's a turtle! Mr. Turtle! Oh my god, look how big this thing is, guys! It's huge! Alright, Mr. Turtle, just hang on one second. I'm gonna have to build you a big ol' aquarium. Uh, um, uh, Mr. Turtle? Uh, okay, bye, I guess. Nice knowing you. Um, I don't know what happened there, but, um, I guess we don't have an awesome giant turtle. And things got worse later that night when I got attacked by a swarm of baby spiders. Oh, look how cute and little they are. Hey, that's not nice, don't bite me. The next day I wanted to go to another island and I thought this one over there looked really cool so I think I'll head over to that one. And luckily I still had enough cobblestone to make it there. I 
finally made it to the island and it looked like there was some sort of enchanting room. There was a chest in the middle and I was hoping to get something really epic. Come on chest, give me something good. All this work and all I get is iron. This game's always trolling me. At least there was a fully built nether portal behind it. Before I entered it, I wanted to do a little bit more exploring around the island. I found a cage with a sheep burning inside of it, and then I found another chest. The chest had these weird seashells in it and some blue orbs, but I honestly have no idea what they do, so maybe you guys can help me out. I finished exploring the island, and now it was time to enter the nether. Well, so far it looks like this is a normal nether. I'm not really seeing any lucky blocks anywhere. I'm not really liking the spawn. It looks like it's totally enclosed. I decided to leave the nether because I'm not prepared for it and I'm gonna need a few pickaxes. I got geared up for the nether and now it was time to head back to the portal. But I realized it was nighttime, so it's gonna be a bit dangerous because I'm gonna have to fight my way back. Hell froze over Red Rover, Red Rover, better get your moving for the snow game. Everything was going well until I accidentally killed my pigeon. I'm honestly not sure how that happened. I'm pretty sure he was on my shoulder, but for some reason he flew off right in front of my sword. I guess he wasn't the smartest pigeon. I got back into the nether and began my search for a bastion or a nether fortress. All I wanted were some sunny days, but they never seemed to come to me. Tried to get him out of his dungarees, never got past having lunch with me. It's just funny how in some degree funny people seem to freak like CK's other hand. Oh look at that guy's right in the lava over there, there's a bastion. Unfortunately I'll have to come back because I have no gold armor and I'm definitely not going into a bastion without that. So um, on my way back I kind of ran into a hoglin and died. And this is exactly why hoglins are my least favorite mob. What about you guys, what's your least favorite mob? I re-geared to hopefully get my stuff back and then I spent the next few days inside the nether. The bastion I found ended up being a bridge bastion and those are by far my favorite because all the gold is so easy to get to. And I was able to mine all the gold without any issues. After mining all the gold blocks, the next thing to do was find the chests. I found the first two chests and I'm really hoping they have something good. The first one was absolute garbage and the second one was actually really good. It had a ton of obsidian in it. Everything was going so well, but then I ran into another hoglin. No, please get away from me. I was doing so well. Why? Oh my gosh, well, there is all of my loot. Hopefully I can get it back. I did get my loot back, but then I died again to a brute. But after I came back, I outsmarted him. And now I can finally make my trades in peace. I was really hoping to get some ender pearls, but I didn't even get one. And it made me realize maybe they're disabled on this game mode and you can only get them from lucky blocks like the first one I got. But then if that were true, why even have another in the first place? Hmm, I really don't know, but I think I'll just go ahead and leave the nether for now because I already spent a few days in here. I got out of the nether on day 36, and it looks like it's already about to be nighttime, so I think I'll just organize my loot and call it a night. I feel like it's been a really long time since I mined some lucky blocks, so I spent day 37 doing just that. Then this crazy one-eyed blowfish spawned, and he just started flopping all over my island attacking me. Hey bro, that's not cool. Come on, what did I do to you? But he wasn't the smartest and flopped right off my island. Well, that was a bit anticlimactic. Better him than me. I continued mining, and then I got my most favorite item in all of Minecraft. That's right guys, I got an elytra. I climbed to the top of my castle and got ready to jump off. I'm gonna be honest guys, I haven't actually used an elytra in vr before so don't laugh if i die oh my god this is awesome guys i promise you it is so much better than normal minecraft while i was flying around enjoying myself i ended up finding a chest on the back of this building whoa what do we got here maybe we uh finally got some of that juicy loot and sure enough, we got our second Eye of Ender. I did some more flying around because I was just having way too much fun, and then I saw another chest in a tree. And then, um, yeah, I kind of died. Alright, so I might not be the best at using the Elytra, but I did manage to get to the top of the tree and get the chest, and I got another Eye of Ender. I went back to mining Lucky Blocks and ended the night getting blown up by a Super Creeper.
The morning of day 38, I repaired my island and figured I would use obsidian to hopefully make my base a bit stronger. Unfortunately, I ran out of obsidian, but I'll just use cobblestone for now. I'm sure I'll get more obsidian later on. And next, I decided to make gates for my animal pen and organize all the animals. On the next day, I decided I wanted to make a mob farm so that I could finally start grinding XP, so I spent the next couple days getting some cobblestone. Once I get enough XP, I'll be able to enchant my stuff and have a way better time surviving. By day 42, I figured I had enough cobblestone, so I decided to make my mob spawner over on this side of my castle. Unfortunately, I messed up the build a couple times, so it took longer than I planned. By day 45, the mob grinder was finally complete. For some reason, the mob grinder was so slow compared to normal. I'm not sure why it was barely spawning any mobs, but it's definitely going to take me a few days to get enough XP to enchant all my gear. Hello, are any mobs home? Hello? As I waited for mobs to spawn in the grinder, I would mine lucky blocks, and I ended up getting a really good drop. I got this mob spawner, so I put it at the top of the mob grinder, but it didn't really do much. I'm not sure why it didn't work, but nothing was coming out of it, so I kind of just gave up on that idea. This method of farming lucky blocks while waiting for mobs to spawn was actually working out pretty well. But as you guys probably already know, anytime something seems to be going good for me, it never does. Every time I got a decent amount of XP, something crazy would spawn and just kill me. No, why super zombies? Come on. <sighs> I give up. That's it. I'm done. After rage quitting that night, the morning ended up being really nice. I got this really cute cat that followed me all over my castle. I decided to leave him inside because I didn't want the little guy to get hurt. And of course I'll need help from you guys giving this little cat a name. Now that I had a decent amount of XP again, I figured it was a good time to make an enchanting table. Alright, let's see what we got. Looks like we got projectile protection on my chest piece. Ooh, feather falling on my boots. That'll definitely come in handy. Sharpness 2 on my sword. Definitely not bad. Protection 1 with aqua affinity on my helm. And on my leggings, I got unbreaking 1. So it's definitely not god gear, but I think given the circumstances, this is pretty darn good. I tested out my gear, and I am completely doming skeletons and zombies. I am so OP now, I'm pretty sure I'm unkillable. Yeah, you want some too? Man, come here. Oh, well, um, this is awkward. It's now day 49, and I think I want to go to another one of these floating islands. I'm not sure which island I want to go to, but I do know I need more cobblestone, so I'm going to spend most of day 49 farming that. It's now day 50 and I believe I have enough cobblestone to make it to one of these islands. I'm still not sure which island to go to, but I decided to go to the big one just cause it looks cool with all the pink trees. And I'm glad I picked this island because I ended up finding something really good. Alright, I finally made it to the island, and I'm really curious to see what we'll find. Oh look at that, we found some more villagers to steal from, I, I mean borrow from. Wow, and this island is also sacrificing these poor villagers. I ended up finding a few chests on the island, but I didn't find anything that good. But that was until I found this weird area blocked by spider webs. I broke my way inside, and it looked like some sort of mine shaft going down into the ground. And then, you guys will never guess what I found. Oh no way I just found this, that's awesome. By the end of episode 1, we managed to crap ourselves 5 times, die 24 times, and lose 10 animals. Make sure to like and subscribe for part 2 where I'll have more epic builds and hopefully get to the end portal so that I can defeat the ender dragon. If you have any suggestions or tips, make sure to leave a comment below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.